Culture Committee to order at 11 a.m. Would you please stand for the invocation and Councillor Cody Poindexter, thank you. A skill that you have put on our hearts, Father, and help us to lead with the, the right heart and the right mind, Father, to for the betterment of the Cherokee people. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Cody. Okay, um, Shelly, could we have a roll call, please? Yes, ma'am. Victoria Vasquez. Ani. Cody Poindexter. Ani. Sasha Black Box Qualls. Here. Danny Callison. Here. Julia Coates. Joe Deer. Here. Mike Dobbins. Here. Kevin Easley. Here. Lisa Hall. Here. Johnny Kidwell. Here. Daryl Legg. Here. Dora Petskowski. Here. Joshua Sam. Here. Mike Shambaugh. Melvina Shot Pouch, E.O. Smith, yes. Condessa Tihi. We have a quorum. Thank you. Um, um, we assume everyone's had a chance to look at the minutes from the last meeting. I'd like to ask for a motion for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Our first uh, report is from Cultural Tourism, and today in place of Molly Jarvis, looks like we have Mr. Travis Owens. Welcome, Travis. Thank you for having us today. All right, great to be with you all. Um, I wanted to know, we have a new report format in your packet, so I wanted to kind of walk through that and just give you a couple highlights, because the reporting periods you just need to pay mind to. So. On, that, on the first page of that report, we've got kind of a dashboard that shows you some metrics um, and kind of a look at our cultural tourism portfolio, including museums, gift shops, welcome center, um, and kind of our key metrics there. So highlighted, we have our operations with guest counts, um, some numbers for our history course, um, our genealogy services, um, artist impact through Artist Recovery Act primarily right there and then news and reviews. So that period will be updated at the top, so it's October through January. So we'll have kind of a look, um, th those numbers will be a look at the previous months. And then in terms of upcoming projects and then programs and events on the next pages, you'll see a three month look ahead, so you'll know what's coming, coming ahead. So just wanna highlight a couple of those things in terms of capital projects. We're wrapping up the master site planning for the Cherokee Heritage Center, so hopefully I have something to share with you soon on that. We also, um, with all of our cultural and historic sites that we've renovated over now 15 years, we're trying to be good stewards of those, and so you'll see some projects going on to help continue preservation efforts with those buildings, Supreme Court, oldest government building in the state of Oklahoma. So we're just wrapping up some preservation on those again. So uh, and we also just reopened the John Ross Museum after a closure over the winter to do some foundation repairs and some stabilization there as well. And the same thing with the Cherokee National Prison. So just so you know, those are going on. We're also excited to kind of be wrapping up the master site plan for the Will Rogers birthplace in Ulaga. As you may recall, we acquired that from the state of Oklahoma last summer. And the fir first phase of that, I think we'll be bidding, hopefully in mid-April mid or early May, will be the renovation of the historic home there and um, bringing that site back up. Um, and so, other than that, we have some upcoming programs and events. We have our Trail of Tears art show reception, so mark your calendars for that for next, next Friday, April 5th, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., and then the show opens officially on April 6th, and that'll be at the Cherokee Springs Art Gallery there in Cherokee Springs Plaza. We also, I want to note a correction, the Watercrest Fest is a brand new event taking place at Saline Courthouse. It'd be a, it's a pretty interesting event, kind of a mixed culinary slash natural resource experience there. Um, you may know that watercress grows abundantly there in the spring, and we're going to have that as well as um, uh, artists and marketplace and um, live performances, and it should be a great day. But that is actually on April 20th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Also, just want to note, um, <coughs> in our exhibition, since we sent you this, we have confirmed Another um, a showing of We Are Cherokee, Cherokee Freedmen and the Right to Citizenship, that will um, debut at another location at the U.S. Marshals Museum in Fort Smith um, on May 11th. So that exhibit will be there through January of next year. So we continue to try to elevate that story and share that exhibit. Um, you may recall we had it, we hosted it in uh, Tulsa at 101 Archer after we hosted at the History Museum. So we'll continue to showcase that exhibit. 
And then I um, hope you also just uh, be mindful of our Cherokee history courses. And I know that we just finished up one in um, Bayan just re last week. So open for any questions you may have. Anyone have questions for Travis? Yes. Councilor Deer. It's not really a question, Travis. Um, tonight, the Pinnacle Awards will be taking place. Yes. And we have two Cherokee citizens, and one happens to be Molly Jarvis. So I would like you to send back word with her. It's a huge award. The other one is one of my constituents. So I would like to say congratulations to Molly. Yes. So I okay. was so, sort of hoping she'd be here, but she's probably getting prepared. I heard they have a long day today. Yeah, she's actually at our CMB board meetings, yeah. but we're very proud of her as well. So thank you all. Yeah. share that with her. So thank you, Travis. That's it, Chair. Councilor Sam. Thank you, Chair. I uh, just had a question about the facility there in Stillwell, the mask make a plan the old one yeah do we have a master plan yet or any details for the upcoming change yeah so we are we don't yet we are working we're working to sign a contract with the architecture firm now that will look at renewing that space and um you know get that um get the renovations there started yeah i just got a pat on the back for you i was going to bring that up but uh, on our history class it was five thursdays it was a big success. I think the highlight of the two classes, of all the classes, was people really loved the part about the clans and then our involvement in the Confederate. I mean, the feedback I've got they, about the Confederate battles and all that, that was, but I know it was good because people were getting there on time and, and when they, if they run over a few minutes, nobody got up and left and they stayed and listened. So it was, we really appreciate that and that good feedback. Thank you, appreciate it. We'll pass that on, thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, Councilor Easley. Travis, I've got one question for you. If you could stay after. Okay. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Um, I wanted to just ask you to make an announcement, if you can, if you don't mind, about the fact that they're not having the um, April Cherokee Days at the Smithsonian. You might comment on that, because I know a lot of people are used to going. Yes. So you all may recall last year we, uh, the, Smithsonian had suspended their programming um, as part of response to the pandemic and just had their first, pro we were their first program back last year. Um, and so after that, they, they decided to again suspend their programming as they're working on some big program initiatives and they don't have the capacity right now. So for this year at least, we won't be back at uh, Cherokee Days at National Museum of American Indian, um, but we hope in the future we will. Thank you. Um, and I had a question about your watercress vest at Celine, um, the one that on, that's on April 20th is different from, so you're having a culture class on Wild Indian Gathering there in March, the end of this month, is that? Today, we're having oh, that taking, today. On, taking place today. Um, so on the one, at the one for April 20th, will there actually be um, Wild Onions available, and will there be food? Or is it just there a, is a culinary experience. I don't know if there's specific Wild Onions, but there is, there is food available. I, and I'm at Watercrest, I'm sorry. Yes. So that you'll be able to have a taste. I believe, yes. Yay. I love watercress. Will people be able to buy it to take home? I don't think we're selling. I'll check on that and I'll confirm with you. Or give it a, give us some. <laughs> Just give us some. <laughs> Go gather it. It is fun to gather, though. And let's see. I don't believe I have any other questions. So I believe we are through with you, Travis. Thank you very much for being here. All right. Thank you all so here. much. Next up, from Cherokee Nation Language Department, I see Mr. Howard Payton. Welcome. Seal the God. I'm sorry I've, um, I am having to um, have a little bit of pollen issues right now, so this may be a shorter report than usual, which uh, may make everybody really happy <laughs> this council today because... Uh, there is a comment or two of, of guys, uh, I had to go after Howard, so I know that uh, uh, Junior knows my, remembers my father, and um, uh, I'll leave sometimes and say, man, I'm turning into him. But uh, I believe, I still believe that he could have out me, Junior, by all means. So, um, Council, we're, uh, we're glad to, to be involved in what we're doing. We definitely have uh, the last 
couple of months we've had a lot of interactions with different tribes that has came and seen us and um, hearing some of the stories and some of the difficulties they're dealing with with language revitalization in comparison to what we deal with, uh, you sure walk away grateful. Um, and so I'm glad that we have the Cherokee Nation, our chief council and deputy and council that has invested so much into what we do. And so I know that the, the public, uh, you guys are representation of Cherokee Nation and our people. And so I know that the public does as well. So uh, hats off to you by all means. Um, our translation department, of course, is uh, always, always busy. Uh, year to date, they've done more than uh, 43,000 translations. Uh, we've had a, uh, the different things for posters and, and that sort of thing coming out with 610 posters, uh, 500 USBs handed out that we, we give uh, to uh, a lot of people that has a lot of our content, has more than eight megs of content. Has maybe, I don't know, two, three hundred times more access than what I had when I was a kid with C. Say Right, right? So, not saying that C. Say Right is anything bad about, but that's about all we had back then. So, uh, it's been this one little drive of our cartoons and everything just immediately where they can plug in and uh, get engaged in that. So, um, we're always happy for that. Uh, Teacher Bridge, we're, we continue to uh, work with them. This time we're accepting some more participants and we're kind of teaming up with our emergency schools and different folks that's working within the Cherokee Nation's language department to help uh, hire their proficiencies. And some of the grants and stuff we're writing is to, to help people get to a higher proficiency uh, that, is, that is helping for the next generation and that sort of stuff. So it's investing internally uh, with, um, with our staff. And so that's, that's good. I remember in the in, uh, council, Lady Tehe, I'm sure would remember when we used to talk about uh, actful standards, intermediate, mid, and that was just uh, something that was just top notch. And, and uh, now we're looking at advanced mid, advanced high, and how to help people get to superiors levels. And so that's always, always good. Um, our language program has also went out to the at-large. Uh, hope uh, and uh, this this time around had did um, Los Angeles and San Diego. They just finished up or finishing up of Arizona. I've been blessed to be able to uh, jump in on some of them uh, when it's online and watch. And uh, man, I tell you what, that they're doing a top-notch job, guys. And uh, I've today. Uh, Roger Graham, who was covering them, said, man, I've never, some of these guys come in and just, you know, know just a few uh, words. And you think, I'm not for sure if they're ever going to, you know, how they're going to advance and within just a little while they're saying sentences. And so uh, I knew that that would happen, but it's always, well, you have the hope, right, that that happens, and then when it happens, it always makes you feel good. Uh, we accepted eight more learners in the Master Apprentice Program. Of, we graduated five, uh, five graduates. We hosted the Benominee Nation, uh, the Wadu Kadading Ojibwe Language Institute, the Shine the Rapaho. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about uh, Roy Boney. He has worked with us for years and years and years. Uh, we uh, we just thank the world of him. And what has happened is uh, we're doing projects that's with Cherokee Films and that is, will later be announced and that sort of thing. And they're just like, hey, we can't do the things that we need to do for language without Roy. And so uh, Roy agreed and everybody knows that that's, uh, he's been such an art and that sort of thing. He's, he's needed there. And boy, I tell you what, uh, I know that it's the right choice and that sort of thing, but just not be able to walk down the hall and see that smiling face and he just made things go over so much smoother. Uh, I'm finding out that uh, 
that some of the things that he was doing, I'm having to retrain or be trained the first time to do. And so uh, he's, he's going to be soaring and will never hold anybody down. But boy, I sure miss him already. You know, so he's, uh, I was able to have a meet with him this week and it was just uh, always a joy. So, but uh, he was able to uh, serve as a panelist on the Cherokee Journalism and Print Celebration hosted by Cherokee Nation uh, Cultural Tourism. He covered the topic of Cherokee syllabary being adapted in all forms of written technology since the 19th century. Um, we also, our, some of our translation went to uh, North Carolina for the consortium while they was out there. Uh, they also, Eastern Band, did a ribbon cutting for the new Ch uh, Cherokee Language Center. Uh, we've, Speaker Services is, is doing well. We've had about 55 homes that we've uh, replaced or put on the ground. Uh, on the ground right now, we have additional 15 homes that's on the ground that we're about to start moving people into, and there's about 20 to 25 more coming. And so uh, we met with them. Uh, we're we're looking at. We have quite a few jobs that's right going, and so I know we had a little bit of a stall where we was just doing a lot of roofs and that sort of stuff, and we had to recondition ourselves to do bigger projects. And so I'm thankful for your patience for that, and that, and I know that that's underway and doing it right now. Uh, we do have, in our language village, we have seven homes that's coming in. that should be finished in September, and that's good. I did want to mention to you guys before I'm, we're in the process of public health doing a speaker health assess assessment to be able to assess speaker's health and give us data to be uh, to be able to more meet their needs post ARPA funding, right? And so we 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 have to look at that and make educational type decisions for that. We also have a program that we've started that um, that will has identified some of the top language contributors and start working with them on wellness. It doesn't just have to do with physical wellness, that's part of it, but it's mental, spiritual, the whole works. And so um, some of the guys have just imagined if we was able to keep Durban for another decade or, you know, that sort of thing. So um, we're in the process of that. Them guys are starting. Some of them's coming in telling me I've lost 20 pounds, I've lost 30 pounds. Hey, that's that's good for us. So, um, thanks for bearing with my voice. I'll try to answer any any questions you guys have. Yes, we have, um, yes, Councilor Poindexter. Yes, uh, I just wanted to acknowledge you know the work that Cherokee uh, Speaker Services has done the past mm -hmm. few months. They've really been working well with me, and uh, just recently I, I stay I text Sammy every day. I know I said to Sammy, I know you're sick of seeing me pop up all the time. <laughs> But uh, we went out and we assessed some sites in um, uh, Bell and Greasy, and, and there's going to be some cool stuff coming in April for them. And I'm just really excited about those things that's that's coming. And I know it can uh, the need can get overwhelming because <laughs> yeah. it's it's definitely if you've never been there, you, it's really eye opening for a lot of people. Um, but no, I just wanted to say I really appreciate the work that's that's mm -hmm. going on, and I know we, we still keep moving forward with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but my question was, I had a question about the speaker's book that the speakers, mm -hmm. new speakers will mm -hmm. sign. Um, is there a way to request that to be at a community meeting or yeah. any way for, I had some speakers actually, elderly speakers that reached out that have never signed it yet. Yeah. <laughs> so they were interested in, in getting it going. And it, it's amazing. You know, I know that Cherokee people are just, uh, well, generally, we're apprehensive people. I mean, I am as well. You start putting something in front of me to sign. So I know we had 13 initial meetings, and we went to all these communities, and uh, some of them was apprehensive, uh, apprehensive, but I think they see the heart behind it, and they're getting more and more behind what we're trying to do. And uh, I know we was in Kenwood just here the other day and seeing all the speakers sit around speak Cherokee and, and which would, you know, some of the communities, we wasn't nearly um, 
at the beginning they was a little more cautious, and now they're like, hey, I want to sign that tomorrow. And uh, I'm like, I wish you would have signed it when we tried to get you to sign it, but so we're, we're, we'll get to them and just, just work with us and we'll, we'll get with you. So thank you. Right, Councilor Sam. Yes, Howard. Um, like I said, I'll kind of repeat some of the things Cody said. Um, appreciate some of the work uh, we just worked on here the past couple of that weeks. Always we, blocks. <laughs> we had an elder there that just kind of in a hard way, and we was able to get her taken care of. I appreciate all that. And a couple of things there. Just I know communication. That's the biggest thing we keep getting from some of our the elder speakers or any of the speakers just having that number that they can call and yeah. someone answer it. Uh, have we got a hotline number for? Yeah, yeah uh, we do. And um, I think you probably are getting less and less of that because we do have that man now. Right. And so I, I know I gave you guys phone numbers of last time I was here. I can also uh, give it to you again. Okay, yeah. But it's, it's man, and if it's not, if somebody's not there, it's, even on weekends, it's forwarded. Right. So, okay, yeah. Um, I think that's one of the, I guess, a lot of our calls we get is just someone to, that they can reach out to. And we know that y'all are constantly, there's a lot of need out there yeah. for housing and rehab and just a bunch of needs that our speakers are needing. And we are, we appreciate everything y'all do. Just We just want to make sure we have some of that information that we can pass along to, to those in our areas. Absolutely. Councilor, uh, you, Josh, Lisa, you know, there's there's a, uh, well, I feel like I'm being maybe a little bit uh, disrespectful, but we talk to one there yeah. so much that uh, uh, because these are the, the needs, and I, I, I'm i thankful that you guys see what's, what's, what is there. Uh, a lot of these communities and some of these speakers, uh, they're, in a situation where they've had 400 years of trauma that they've inherited, right? And so it would be like having a big flood in the parking lot that was full of Mercedes Benz and having 10 foot of mud on some of them. It's, them Mercedes are still jewels, you know? And I know speakers much more valuable than anything like that, but uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to dig around the roots and to help people. And uh, it is, uh, man, it's an honor. It's an honor of my life to be able to work with them. They're some of the best people in the world. But uh, society has been a little rougher on them. And, uh, and I, man, I know you guys have the vision because you're out there in the community and see it. And when we first started, you look down, the, you walk in, you look down the ground, see the ground. Look up and see the sky when you walk in somebody's house, and that, that's happening less and less and less and less. And so, uh, it still may be out there, but it's a fraction compared to what we was, did before this. So. Okay, Councilor Shotcash. Uh, I know, uh, you know, the need's been there a long time. And I'm so thankful that this administration has taken, you know, taken time to look at those things. But sometimes, you know, it seems like they don't move as fast as you like to. But, you know, I know it's some of the contractor problems, you know, but it's going, and I see a little bit of it now going a little faster. But uh, I was just going to, this is more informational. Uh, I know I enjoyed the All Turkey Gospel singing last Friday night at Pine Inn. It was really good time but uh, those who might have an interest uh, starting April the 4th right here in Tahlequah at the Elm Tree DJ and starting on Thursday night they will have all turkey preaching all turkey singing and they'll have a different preacher each Thursday night the first uh, Thursday is Richard Butter of mm -hmm. Kingwood and the second uh, Charlie Shell third one third weekend will be Duke Pickup and last would be Guy Soldier Wow. And then they just start again on Thursday night. So if you all want to hear all got, uh, turkey uh, service, they will be doing that. And I think he said they might be filming some of the yeah. services. And But for next month, uh, April the 5th, it will be at Mulberry. And the 19th will be at Belfont. So wow. those of you that live in that area, go out and support them. So, thank you. I think I'm thankful that you mentioned that. I know 
Brother DJ always records, and he's he's been really receptive and like, okay, anything that we have, archive it so for future generations. But I know that we need to make sure we get somebody out there for Mulberry and Belfont as well. So, because you can't ever tell when they're preaching, they may say a word that hasn't been said or recorded, you know. And so we're trying to catch all that. Councillor Teehee, did you have? <clears throat> I sure did have something, and now I'm struggling to remember what it was because there's been so many. There's been so much, uh, so so many good comments. But one of okay. Um, but but as you're as you're kind of um, gauging um, health in in speaker populations, is this something that maybe you envision engaging with maybe public health on as well for yeah. um, for kind of determining some of those assessment uh, type um, criteria? Uh, yes, Councilor, we've been engaging the, uh, public health. We've been partnered with them, and uh, it's. They're, um, they're incredible. They know exactly what we're trying to do. And we've been partnering with them on a few grants besides that. And some has to do with um, um, some of our food sovereignty type issues and that sort of stuff. Because it goes beyond just, oh, walking more. It goes into, you've got to think of a population. We, for thousands of years, had certain things, certain medicines, certain things that we that we utilize, and some of that has been, um, uh, they don't have near the access, so, so we're looking at things outside of just that, but I know even at Durban, you know, we, we have a working, um, a walking program and, that's, and that sort of thing to help them. But an assessment, you know, where Hathic did the last major assessment in 1962, right, and they had Social economic, it had a lot of things that captured, so that's what we're trying to figure out. And, uh, you know, we're estimating that we're looking at right at 1,625 or something like that speakers left. And so we want to be able to do a good enough assessment so when we write a grant that we tell our story good enough to be able to help them receive the best services that they could possibly receive. So. Um. And I know that it, our our speaker population, um, many of them have really close relationships with um, with extended family as well. Mm. Um, so when this may be better said off camera, lar largely because I, I think that oftentimes those those speakers in the family are kind of the uh, matriarch mm -hmm. or or kind of the they're they're the bedrock foundation of that family and so oftentimes they're serving as a resource not just for their own immediate family but also for extended extended family cousins um, nieces nephews you know sometimes in in some cases even third and fourth cousins and so that person serving as kind of that bedrock that support system if you're strengthening the foundation for that person, it's going to in turn kind of strengthen strengthen the rest of that family in a lot of ways. And, so you know, and how do you do a s assessment like that? Because right. the rubric and the different things that we would build to assess a more American or European petri dish type is not what we're dealing with. This is a more relationship based uh, population of people, and so we really, really strategically for putting that in, asking, okay, who all are you helping when we start assessing that? And not just who's in your house, but also who's on your property because they <coughs> sometimes have a mobile unit or a camper or whatever that's out back that they're mm -hmm. trying their best to support folks. And you, when you start looking at their revenue, that's divided up in fractions because they're supporting all of them. And I, I don't I don't know that our nation fully understands yet. When this population goes, they are holding people up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're holding people up because they've been taught "dead talkly you know, says, to, uh, yeah. to yeah. hold on to people, and that's never let go. Uh, so um, I think that. Uh, well, we've, they're here and there was, there's still an avenue to f 
fix not only that, but the population that's underneath them that they, they serve because each one of them is social workers. We need to use that the best we can. That's what we're trying to do, Council. Yeah. Well, though, uh, appreciate the time, Chair. Thank you. Yes, Councilor Hall. I just wanted to say I enjoyed yesterday's visit. Um, District 3 first language speaker received mm -hmm. her modular home. It was exciting to see her smiles and how much that she was enjoy. She's already unpacking and enjoying her home. And it was right there at the back door of my family's allotment. So I, it was places that I had run up and down the road and, and my grandparents. And, and um, it's just exciting. I know there's a lot of steps to get to, to that finish line, you know, for our first language speakers, but I got to, I stayed and visited with her, and I just want to say thank you to you all. I know, I know you work hard for our first language speakers and everything, so thank you. I, I realize that folks want a mac, a macaroni or a uh, instant potato solution, mm -hmm. but that's not what we're trying to do. This is a, a microwave speaker service. There, there's always problems, but, uh, we're in there to dig the best we can, and if we look them <coughs> in our hearts of hearts, I know we're doing right. Uh, there's always th things that we can strengthen, but we're we're moving that direction. Um, you have to <coughs> okay. Go ahead, Councillor Qualls. Thank you. Howard, I just wanted to visit with you momentarily after the meeting. Absolutely. Thank you. Councilor Poindexter. Sorry, I forgot to <laughs> add on to it earlier. Um, one <coughs> uh, I'm super thankful for these trailer houses that they do the emergency replacements. Mm -hmm. they're, <clears throat> I've seen them, and they're super nice. They're mm -hmm. like, I know when someone says trailer house, but they, they're really top notch they're really nice and one problem that I run into a lot in my community at Bell is um, almost everyone lives on Indian land mm -hmm. restricted land um, nobody has paperwork or, or deeds that where they own the property and so <coughs> do do y'all have a, a program or do you, who do y'all work with to assist in in I guess acquiring helping these people acquire um, their property or probate, I guess. Um, how, how do you all go about that? Well, it depends on the, the situation. <coughs> and I'm sorry, <clears throat> I got a little bit of a scratch on the back of my throat here, but, you know, our chief, man, I can't sing his praises enough. And I, I remember talking to him saying, we're not trying to have a family feud and divide families. We're trying to put families together. So some of them land issues, <clears throat> you end up in a situation where if you do certain things, there's always that one crazy cousin, you know what I mean, that comes in and, and then you have this big fight and everybody's mad and, you know, grandma wanted this. And, and so one of the last things that we're going to want to do is split a Cherokee family. And so what we've done sometimes has left that mobile unit in our name in case there's an issue we can move that or everybody signs signs that and says so it's and so that's the difference between I know everybody's like like what you said they're uh, they're nice mobiles they're a lot better than what I grew up in uh, and so I know that there's always some spectator that will launch something there that's, that's just that's just the nature of things you know, that you're moving somebody in the mobile unit, even though you're taking, taking them out of a car, you put them, but a lot of that has to do with that mobile unit is utilized because it's versatile. And if you do have the crazy cousin that comes out, that you can say, okay, we'll move and put, put this somewhere else, but you're still taking care of that speaker. And you're not dividing that speaker's family. In the situations that we can work on, we work with a law office here in town and then we redo the deeds and they're able to put the bigger modular units that the crane comes in and puts it on a foundation, puts the two together. And, um, and there's the difference between waiting for a year to get something built or waiting two months to have that done. And so that's, that's the difference that we're doing. 
Anyone else? Okay. Thank you very much. Or Councilor EO, I may have outdid dad today. So, thanks. Next report is uh, from CCO, and we have Ms. Savannah Smith. Welcome. CO, Madam Chair and Council, thank you for having me today. Um, I believe you guys have my report, and I'll take any questions at this time. Anyone have any questions for her? Yes, Mr. Councilor Kidwell. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Savannah, I don't have any questions. I just want to say what a great job you guys did up in Kansas City and Wichita. And uh, shoot, what do we have up there? We had over what? We had uh, 973 at Kansas City, and then we had 670 at Wichita. Wow, man, that's just it was amazing. a good turnout. Yeah, it was, it was a great turnout. We're looking forward to uh, what we got Oklahoma City Oklahoma coming up, City. Uh, mm -hmm. and then a little a little kind of gathering in Tulsa, and then California coming up. Yeah. So. Man, great, great job to you guys over there. Thanks for looking into the Georgia thing. I appreciate that with the history course and uh, uh, just overall great work. Appreciate you. Thank you. Madam Chair. Anyone else? Yes. Councilor Cole. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to visit with you momentarily as well after the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, Councilor E.O. Smith. I just want to say in public one more time that appreciate all your help in, in the new building yesterday. And it, it's, it's been a Big effort and a lot of headaches and, <laughs> and everything, but, but uh, it's going to be well used and everybody's excited and, and you did a great job. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Thank you, Savannah. All right. Thank you, guys. Good to have you. Last but not least, we have a Cherokee National Treasurer's Advisory Committee report, and today we get to see Ms. Jane Austey. Welcome, Jane. Turn on your mic. Report. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them and comment on a few things after you ask your questions. Any, anyone have? Mm. Okay. Um, we should be. Um, having the next round of nominations for National Treasures. About when would we expect those to kind of open? That is one of the things I was going to comment oh, on. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll leave you to comment okay. on Okay. Um, the 2024 Cherokee National Treasures nominations will be open in April. The deadline for submission is June, June 7th, 2024. As in years past, there will be ads placed in the Cherokee Phoenix the nomination form will also be linked to Cherokee.org. And if you know anyone in your community that's doing outstanding work and culturally relative work and have been doing it for quite a while and teaching classes, they would be good future treasures. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I'll be I'll be looking forward to that nomination coming out. Okay. Um, I, I know that there are a number of folks out in our communities who still deserve that recognition right. as national treasure. Right. So I'll I'll be sure once that application comes forward to yeah. to share that as widely yes. as I can. And I hope all of you will because I know we have people in the community that are worthy, and we just need to get them nominated. Right. And um, also, to, to be clear, a person can only be designated as a national treasurer one time, no matter how many skills they have mastery of. Is that? I'm sorry. Would... Like, so for instance, if somebody is um, skill, if somebody already is a national treasurer, they can't be nominated a second right. time. Right. And um, they can only be nominated in the one category that they excel in. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. It's so good to see you here <laughs> you today, too. Jane. In the past, we have also had people that tried to nominate more than one person. And there is a rule. If you nominate someone, you can only nominate one person. Okay. All right. So, I appreciate that clarification. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the time, Chair. Sure. Thank uh, you. Go ahead, Jane, with your... Um, okay. Unless anybody else have questions for her? Mm. Okay. Go ahead. I think you're going to comment on that okay. uh, other item. 
We have lost a couple of our treasures this, this last month or so, uh, Crosland Smith and Ruth England. And it seems like we're losing a couple every few months. So, um, anyway, I'm sure a lot of you knew them, and we will miss them. And we have several Cherokee treasures that are participating in some pretty big exhibits around the country right now. Uh, one instance at the Atlanta airport, and to take shape and meaning at the museum in North Carolina. And we have an exhibit in Oklahoma City at the Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum right now that's highlighting seven matriarchs of Oklahoma art. And we have ongoing exhibits at the Saline Courthouse that you might be interested in attending. And Anyway, that's just about all we have to report on, except our mentoring program is going really well. We have teachers that are out teaching ever since the program began. So there's all kinds of classes available, um, like Cherokee pottery and weaving and basket making. So if you know anyone that wanted to participate in those classes, it's free to Cherokee citizens. Thank you, Jane. I wanted to um, bring up the fact that Jane is one of the seven women artists that are being highlighted at the National Cowboy Heritage and Western Heritage Museum, and the exhibit is open until April 28th, and I do plan to see that before, before it's taken down. I'm so proud of you and all the ladies that um, are they're carrying forward their diverse tribal cultures, and they've also overcome significant challenges, and um, it's just awesome when I see this going on, celebrating yeah. women. Anyone else have any comment? We'll let Jane go. Thank you very much okay. for being here, Jane. Good to see you. Thank you. Old business, none pending. New business, none pending. Does anyone have any announcements regarding culture? If not, the next meeting is tentatively scheduled for Thursday, May 30th at 11 a.m. I need a motion for adjournment, please. All in favor? All right. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you.